Hello, and welcome to the beginning of a new series that I'm calling Learn to Love Sudoku. And actually, I was originally going to call it Learn Sudoku, but I realized that that was accurate but not precise. Because what I really want to do is introduce people to the world of good Sudokus and why people have become obsessed with, with doing them and, and watching people do them and, and all the good stuff. So you may be here randomly. You may be here because a friend linked you this video or this series. Um, you may be here because you already love Sudoku and just for some reason want to watch this and, and improve your, your Sudoku game, which is absolutely fine. Um, but I think what I'm targeting this towards is people who've never done Sudoku before. They don't even know what Sudoku is, but they're hearing from a friend or a family member or just online in general that there's people who are really enjoying Sudoku and the Sudoku community and puzzle solving in general, and they want to know what all the fuss is about, and they want to get into it, or you know, they want to participate with their friends and family to because if they're enjoying it, they want to see if they enjoy it as well. You know, whatever your reasons are, um, you know, we we've been stuck in this uh, pandemic lockdown for uh, coming on ten months now, and people are looking for stuff to do, and that's what's made everything really blow up the past the past year. Um, so, but I, what I'm finding is that a lot of channels that are focused on Sudoku are really focused on getting people more into it rather than originally into it, uh, especially if they've never heard of Sudoku before. And, and there are definitely teaching moments in, in these other videos, but I wanted to make a series that was purely, okay, let's do the fundamentals, let's learn what Sudoku is, Let's learn why people are having fun with it. Let's learn how to fun, have fun with it ourselves. So I hope that's a, a good enough intro and for you. And, and even if you are an experienced Sudoku solver, maybe there's something here you'll learn or you'll find some puzzles that, that interest you anyway. So please do stick around. And we will learn how to love Sudoku, not just how to do it. So with that in mind, I will start at the very beginning with the fundamentals. So this video is going to cover what the Sudoku rules are. It's going to cover the most basic fundamental techniques of how to solve them. So these are what, and I really don't like the word that I'm going to use here, but this is what most of the community would describe as easy Sudokus. I think I'd more like to describe them as simple, um, and I think the the reason I want to give this distinction is a lot of Sudokus end up graded by a computer. And what computers are good at often doesn't intersect as much with what humans are good at as we'd like to believe. And so a computer is saying, hey, this Sudoku is easy. But that doesn't mean it's not fun, and that doesn't mean that a human is going to just instantly get it. So. What I want to focus on are the techniques and the puzzles that are good for humans to do, not good for computers to do. And I also want to break some habits of people who maybe have done some Sudokus in the past and, and sort of figured, oh, this is how you solve them, and oh, isn't this boring? So if I can break that habit and show you why solving Sudoku isn't actually boring, then that might be helpful as well. So let's get started with what the rules of Sudoku are. What exactly is Sudoku? So what you're looking at here is a blank Sudoku grid. This is what, I mean, uh, uh, obviously there's exceptions to everything, but almost all Sudokus and Sudoku variants start with a grid that looks like this, or some modification of it. But for now, we're going to deal with classic Sudoku. We're not going to look at variants yet, although this series will cover variants. And so for the classic Sudoku is what it's called, the original Sudoku, the normal Sudoku, whatever you want to call it, this is what a blank grid is going to look at. And every single puzzle comes from here. And don't worry, there are a large number of possible just classic Sudoku puzzles. So if you want to stick with classic, that's perfectly fine. But I think you'll find yourself that as you do them, you're going to want to also look at variants and, and other things that are like Sudoku. But anyway, so this blank grid, what does it mean? Well, it's nine by nine. So that means that there's nine cells. These are called cells that I'm selecting now. 
Each one of these is a cell. So there's 81 cells in total in a square grid that's nine by nine. So there's nine across this way and there's nine down this way. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of terminology here. Um, just as in chess, there's a way to say, what, it, what do we call this cell? There seems to be a, a kind of community standard for Sudoku on what to call these. And, and you will see other variants of this, but most commonly you'll see someone refer to a row number and a column number. So if you've ever seen a spreadsheet before or you know, some, any kind of grid like that, matrix, you'll, you'll be familiar with rows and columns. So a row goes left to right and a column goes top to bottom. And that's just how you're looking at the Sudoku. Obviously, a Sudoku grid could be rotated 90 degrees, and now your rows and columns are swapped. But basically, the way that we're looking at the Sudoku now, the, we say there's, there's columns and there's rows. And so the rows, we can actually fill in some digits here. We can label them 1 through 9. So this is row 9. This, sorry, this is row 1. This is row 4. This is row 9, etc. So here I've labeled the rows. And similarly, columns can be labeled like this. Don't worry about the things turning red there. So this is column one, column two, column three, etc. So if I were to select this cell here, we could say it's row six, column seven. So you always say the row first and then the column. So we're row six, column seven. So if I were to say row eight, column three, we can look and see, okay, that's row eight, column three. So the other thing that you may notice about a Sudoku grid is we have these thicker lines that sort of denote these three by three boxes. So in total there's nine three by three boxes and I can, I can label those as well. I'll label them in the center. And this is usually how people are going to refer to the boxes by number. So if I say box six, I mean this box here, which is if we were to count left to right top to bottom, then we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just as I've labeled it. So box six is this box. So the center of box six here is going to be row five, column eight, because this is one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's the center of box six. So we don't usually use the box when referencing a specific cell, but if we're referencing an entire box, we might just use box 6, or box 8, or box 1. So that is the rows, the columns, and the boxes. So why is that important? Well, every Sudoku puzzle that you'll be presented with has a solution with every single cell filled with a number between 1 and 9. And the rules of how you fill them is every row has to have exactly one of one through nine. Every column has to have exactly one of one through nine. And every box has to have exactly one of one through nine. So for example, a valid row would just be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But then I can't use that same row again because I would be, say, repeating the one in the column, I'd be repeating a two in this column, I'd also be repeating them in this box. So for example, here I might be able to do four, five, six, because those are not present in their column already, and they're not present in the box already. And so then for the, to finish off the box, I could do seven, eight, and nine. Right? But then now what can I put here? Well, the four, five, six is in the box and in the row. So I'd have to pick either a one, two, three, or a seven, eight, nine. And we could go through and we could find some solution. But the trick is every Sudoku that you're actually going to be presented with in terms of puzzle form, as long as it's a, there's sort of this unwritten fourth rule that when you're presented with a particular puzzle, there is exactly one solution. It's called uniqueness. There's one unique solution. And if it's a good puzzle, you can get there completely logically without having to guess. So for example, if I just present this blank grid, it's not actually a valid Sudoku puzzle because we break the fourth rule because there's more than one possible solution. In fact, there's something like 10 to the 27 possible solutions to a blank grid. So what, you're, what we're gonna find is that there'll be numbers scattered around the grid, and there'll be at least 17 of them provided, right? Like 
th that's obviously not 17, but there'll be numbers scattered around the grid, and those will be fixed values. And then our job is to figure out what all the other cells are that meet all the Sudoku rules and is the unique solution to the puzzle. So obviously this puzzle would have more than one possible solution to it. So let's go over how we might figure that out. And the first fundamental strategy we're going to talk about is what people call singles. And then that singles are broken down into two types of singles. There's naked singles, and there's hidden singles. And I hate both of the names, because I believe they were named during a time when people would do candidate filling. So let's talk about that. Um, let's say we have in this row 1 through 7 already filled in. A typical solver who isn't familiar with you know, speed solving or, you know, the fun way to solve Sudokus. I mean, this is fun for some people, but it's not the way I'm going to present. A typical person is going to say, okay, these two cells, we have eight and nine left. So I'm going to fill eight and nine like that. And those are called candidates. So this is saying, okay, this cell could be an eight or nine. This cell can be an eight or nine. And so we've, we've reduced it to just those two. And they're going to go through the entire puzzle and they're going to say, okay, well, this one, obviously this isn't a valid puzzle, but they'd say this one, it can't be one, two, or three, because those are in the box already. But it could be four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And then this one can also be four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And they'll go through every single cell, and they'll fill every possible candidate, and then they'll start solving. And I want to break every one of this habit. This is a terrible habit for Sudokus, because... You get information overload, and it turns into this boring by rote solve that you know you can see easy to make mistakes. It's easy to miss interesting things about the puzzle, and it doesn't even make most puzzles easier to solve unless you're solving the easiest form of puzzles. So what I want to do is drill in some fundamentals for how to spot uh, how, how to spot things without doing this crazy fill all the candidates method. So for example here, let's say we had an 8 down here somewhere. Well, this would make this cell what's called a naked single. And the reason it would have been called a naked single is because we would say, okay, well, this cell can be 8 or 9. And for the row, this cell can be 8 or 9, but it also sees an 8, so it can only be 9. So you filled all the candidates and you go, oh, this one has only one candidate in it. So it's a naked single. You can nakedly see, with all the candidates filled, that this cell is a 9. So we would just go, okay, this cell is a 9. And then we would look and say, okay, well now this 8, 9 is seeing a 9, so we can remove the 9 candidate. And now we have another naked single. This is a naked single 8. And naked singles can appear in all sorts of ways. So for example, I could have 1, 2, 3, 4 in the row here. I could have 5 in the box somewhere. And then I could have six, seven, eight, nine in this column. Oops, I guess I should remove one of those. So I could have, if we look at this cell, it sees one, two, three, four in its row. It sees five in its box, and it sees six, seven, eight in its column, leaving just nine. So this can only be a, sorry, only be a nine. So, and you can see that in the solving tool we're using, if I were to try to put a six or a seven or an eight or a five, it helpfully will put it red and it'll mark in red what it's conflicting with. So in this case, it's saying, hey, we have two fives in this box or we have two fours in this row. So you did something wrong. And so in that case, this has to be nine. So this is a naked single. Now here's the trouble. It can often be a little bit difficult, you know, imagine we have a bunch of other stuff filled in this grid. It can be pretty difficult to say, oh, obviously that's a nine. Like when it's when it's in isolation, like we're seeing it right now, maybe it's not so unobvious, but if I were to mix things up and say have a six here, and then this was a two, and then this was a four, and this was a seven, and then, you know, this five were here, maybe, maybe the two were actually here instead of here. It's starting to become a little bit less clear that this is a naked single nine, and things can become much more complex than this. So even though a computer is going to say naked single, that is innately obvious and easy. A human does not find it innately obvious and easy, especially if you don't want to go through the rote thing of going through every single cell and filling candidates. So 
But it's important to know that naked singles exist, and sometimes they're what you have to spot. And getting better at spotting them is not necessarily a bad thing. But what I want to focus on are hidden singles. So again, the most obvious hidden single is still this, because this is both a naked single and a hidden single. So what is a hidden single? It's when within a particular group, so within a row, within a column, or within a box, there is only one cell that can have a particular number. So in this case here, within this row, only this cell can have a 9 in it. And that's obvious, like that, that's almost trivially obvious, because there's only one cell left in the row that can be filled at all, and so it's a hidden single 9, but that's not so hidden. But I could do something really simple, like I could remove this 4, and then I could put a 9 here. So in this case, where does 9 go in this row? Well, naively we'd say a 9 can go here or here, but there's a 9 here. So with there being a 9 here, we could, a computer would say this is a naked single 4, but a human may more easily see that this is a hidden single 9. Because within this row, there's only two open slots, we need a 9, and this one can't be a 9 because there's a 9 in the box. So we must put 9 here. And now that this row has only one candidate left, it's a much easier to see that, okay, this one's a 4. So what's another example? Well, we just did rows. We could do columns. So we could do something like maybe let's pick a different column. Let's say this is 1, 2, 4. And obviously these are going to be mixed up more. But let's take this, for example. So in this column, where can 9 go? Well, we have four open cells, so we could go in any of these four open cells. And we have to be careful we're asking the question about something that's not already present in the column. Like, if we say, where can 1 go in this column? The answer is the 1 is already here in this column. We don't need to put another 1. But we know there's a 9 missing, and we can ask the question, where does 9 go in this column? And the answer is, well, it could go in any of these four, except this 9 in this box prevents a 9 from being in any of these three. So that leaves just this cell for a 9. So this is a hidden single 9 for the column, because 9 can't go in any of these three. It obviously can't go where we already have a digit filled. So this is the only cell left for a 9. And notice we didn't have to do any candidate filling to find that. And in fact, if we did do candidate filling, it might be harder to find that, especially in certain situations. Finally, we have boxes. So the most simple way to see this in a box is let's place a 9 here. Let's place a 9 here, place a 9 here, and here. So now if we look at box 3, which remember is this box here, this is box 3, we can ask the question, where does 9 go in box 3? Well, if we look, this 9 here is preventing these 3 from being a 9, because there's, there's already a 9 in this row. This 9 here prevents these 3 from being a 9. This 9 here prevents all three of these from being a 9, and this 9 here prevents this one from being a 9. So now we only have one cell unhighlighted. This is the only one that can be a 9. So this is a hidden single 9 in box 3. And actually, as a really good rule of thumb, if you have four of the same digit, all what we call looking into the same box, there you, you are guaranteed to have only one cell left in that box to have that number. So this box is basically done. We know that there's a 9 here. And obviously if I were to move this 9 here, then these 9s look into these columns, and these 9s still look into these rows, and so now the 9 goes here. But we don't have to have just four 9s looking in. We can concoct a different situation. Like let's say we have already filled... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like this, or we could even get rid of these, right? So we have one, two, three, six, and five already filled in this box. And then I have a nine already in this row. Well, obviously a nine can't be where we've already filled in one, two, three, five, six. But also the nine can't be in this row because we have a nine in the row already. So 
this is the only place for a 9. This is a hidden single 9 in the box. There must be a 9 here. So you can imagine there are, there are interesting situations that will cause hidden singles in boxes or rows or columns that you may not immediately recognize. Another way that we could potentially construct one of these is say we have the four corners of this box filled, and then we have, say, a 9 here and, oops, and a 9 here. Well, then these 9s look up into here, and now this is the only place for a 9. Right? And you can, you can imagine all sorts of patterns that happen there. So when you're looking for naked singles, you're basically looking cell by cell, and you're going, what's it see in its row? What's it see in its column? What's it see in its box? Is it seeing eight of the nine values? If so, which of the eight of the nine values is it seeing? And what's the one remaining? Let's fill that. And if you discover that it actually has two or three or four remaining, well, you've just wasted that time. And you would go, oh, well, I might as well, since I looked at it, I might as well fill the candidates now. And now you're doing boring candidate filling. You're not solving the puzzle. However, when you're looking for hidden singles, you don't have to fill candidates. And I'm going to prove that to you. So let's look at this puzzle here. This is a puzzle that I've specifically constructed, which can be solved using only hidden singles. Now, of course, you're not going to encounter puzzles like this in the wild unless they've been specifically constructed to do so. But I wanted to make this puzzle as a demonstration of, here's a Sudoku you can solve only knowing the hidden single technique and without touching anything other than normal fill mode. I'm not going to fill a single candidate, and I'm going to solve this, and I'm going to walk you through what my logic is as I solve it. So let's get started. The first thing that I would be looking at is boxes that have very few candidates, or very few cells left that aren't filled. So like we have this box here, box four. We also have box six. And what I'm looking for is if there's any values outside of that box that look in that aren't already present in that box. So if we're looking at this box, maybe you're seeing it already, but let's, let's just mentally think about what values are left in this box. And I'm just going to go through my head. We have one, two, three, four, five already filled. We need a six. We already have seven. We need eight, and we already have nine. So that, that is the three left, so it's one, six, and eight. So now I'm gonna look to see what stuff outside of this box might be looking in that's a one, six, or eight. Well, we've got this six and we've got this six, and they're, they're not doing anything for us because we already have these filled. We have this eight, that's not doing much, but wait, we have this eight here. And this eight here is looking down into this box. And so neither of these two cells can be an eight. So we can fill an 8 here, because that's a hidden single in box 7. So now we can, often what, I'll, what I like to do, and this might not be immediately relevant, is once I've filled a candidate like this, I like to see what, what is this one seeing? Does this give me anything new? So I can, I can just highlight this row, I can highlight this column, and I can just look to see, okay, what else is this maybe doing? So it's obviously not doing anything for this box because this box already has an 8 in it, and it's not doing anything for this box because this box already has an 8 in it. But this box doesn't have an 8 yet, and so now these can't be an 8, and we, we're seeing that there's another 8 looking in here, and this can't be an 8. So we actually have two cells left for an 8, so that unfortunately that's not a hidden single, but we might want to keep 8s in mind in the future for box 9. But we're not filling in any candidates right now, so I'm not even going to mark that. I'm going to try to solve this puzzle without filling any candidates. So what else do we have? We have this box here. This has three left in it. So we need a two, four, and nine. Well, I'm seeing that there's a four looking here, and I'm looking for other fours. And unfortunately, that means two of these could be a four, so there's no hidden single with fours there. We were talking about twos. Two C's here. We, we, that leaves these two for a two, so that's no good. And we were talking about nines. Well, nine is looking here. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. So there's no hidden single in this box yet. But what else do we have? Well, we've got this row. This row only has two values left in it. 
So there's a pretty good chance that we might find a hidden single in this row. So we have one, two, three. We need a four and a nine. Well, I'm already seeing here, this nine here sees this cell. This cell can't be a nine. So this is the only one in the row that can be nine. We can fill a nine here. And this row is now done because it only has one cell left, and we said it was a four that it needs. So I can fill a four here as well. We can think of that as a hidden single, we can think of that as a naked single, however you'd like to do it. But once you have eight in a row, column, or box, it's very easy to fill what that last one is. You just look to see what's missing. Okay, so we just filled this nine and this four, so maybe we should look at what effect that has. Well, we've got this nine looks down here into this box eight. We also have this other nine that's looking down into box eight, and we have this nine looking into box eight. So now box eight, this is a hidden single nine in box eight. So we already have that. And something I like to just quickly check when I filled a bunch of the same number is, where do we have this number already? And do I have a case where maybe I have four, uh, in this case, nines looking into the same box now? Because I filled a bunch. And what we're seeing here is we've got sort of the last row of boxes with nines. We have the middle column of boxes with nines. So that may not be as fruitful as we were hoping. Um, so we're just going to continue looking for hidden singles here. Um, so maybe this row here. So this row has one, two, it needs a three, has four, five, it, needs, it has a six, and so it needs a three, seven, and eight. So I'm looking to see if there's a three, seven, or eight that's already taken care of in two out of these three cells. So I'm seeing this three here, that's seeing this, but unfortunately both of these can be three. And then, the, oh, there's also an eight looking into here. So in this case, if, if I were really on the ball, I might notice, okay, three, seven, eights left in this row, and I already have a three and an eight seeing this cell. So I might be able to go, okay, well, that's definitely a seven. Um, and I could fill that as a seven, but I'm pr trying to prove something to you. I'm trying to prove to you that I can solve this with just hidden singles. And though I know that's a naked single, I'm not going to fill it. So, because we're playing a little game here with that. So maybe if I look at sevens here, unfortunately, we don't, we have three possible places for a seven in this box. So let's keep looking for hidden singles. Um, so we have two left in this box. That's a one and a six. And I'm not seeing a 1 or a 6 looking in here yet, so that's a bust. Uh, what else are we looking for? Okay, well how about 3s? I've got this 3 and this 3, and this is a really good pattern to look for, is when you've got two columns that share sort of a box column, that, that's going to mean that the 3 has to be in one of these two. And then I just look left, and I see that there's a 3 in this row. So we've got the three in this row, and we've got these two threes looking in here. So that's, this actually has to be a three. Now that I've filled this three, it's always good to look at what effect that has. So we have this three and this three looking in here. This three is not really doing much for us. So three can be in, still in one of these two. That's unfortunate. But we haven't given up. Let's see what else we can see. So... We can keep looking at threes. We can see that this three looks up here, but I'm not seeing anything else with that. We've got these, this three looking in, and we've got this three looking in, and we've got this three looking here. So actually, this is the only three left in this box. Now that I filled that three, maybe that affects this box better. So we have these three threes that sort of eliminate this C shape, and so now the only open cell that can be a three is this one. Now maybe we can look down here again. We have this three, we have this three, we have this three, and this three. So that's four threes looking into the box, and as we know, that's going to guarantee that we have a hidden single three here. This was a three placed in a row that now only has two cells left, so let's take another look. So we need a seven and an eight in this row. And this eight is looking down here, so we can actually fill an eight here. This is a hidden single eight in this row. And then we know that the last one for the row is a seven. So we're making good progress. And we actually got this seven that I had found earlier, and we found it via hidden singles. We didn't have to find the naked single. Obviously, it would have been faster if we had noticed that naked single, but I'm simulating that we didn't. Okay, so 
let's keep looking for our hidden singles. So another good technique to use is to look at what what's already filled in a box and just quickly look to see if there's stuff looking in that is not one of these numbers. So in this case, I'm, I'm looking at three, five, six, seven, nine, and I'm looking at, say, in this row here, this row is really powerful because if I can eliminate something in this row, then that'll be that'll force that value into this cell. So we're looking for something that's not three, five, six, seven, nine. Well, three and nine are part of that, but eight here, eight is looking into here, and that eliminates these three from being eight. So that forces an eight right here. And I'm immediately looking up here, and I'm not seeing it, but I'm looking up to see, okay, of what's remaining, which is one, two, and four, do I have two of those values already looking in from my columns? So for example, four, we have one of them looking in. So the four is gonna be in one of these two, um, but we can't place it yet as a hidden single. So let's keep looking. I'm gonna take a quick drink of water. Okay, well, I took a drink of water. Did you spot anything? Well, how about ones in this box? So this is a really powerful pattern where we've got these four filled, and so we sort of have these open rows and columns. And so for example here, I've got my three, five, eight, and nine. And if I look at this column here, if I, can, if I have anything in this column that isn't three, five, eight, or nine, it's already eliminated from three out of the five open cells. That's very powerful. And we can see this one here. So we have three, five, and nine, which are present already. But we have this one here, and that one's eliminating these three. And so now all we have to do is look to see if any of these two also has one eliminated. It should be pretty easy to see this one here. So another way to put that is we have these two ones that eliminate these two columns in this box, leaving just this cell for a one. So I've placed a one, so I like to immediately look to see if that has any inter interesting effect on the rest of the puzzle. I'm not seeing it. Looks like we don't have a whole lot of ones placed yet. So let's, let's look to see if there's anything else. Maybe there's something in this row. No, we just have the three in the row and we already have a three in the box, so that's not gonna be helpful. In fact, it's, it's good to realize at this point that we actually have threes done. So every single box has a three now. So every column, every row, and every box has a three already. That's nine threes. That's the nine threes we get for this whole puzzle. So we don't have to look at threes anymore. Threes are done. So let's see what else we have. We can actually just start at one and we can, we can look forward. You know, if we get stuck, it's, it's always good to just systematically look to see what we might be missing. So let me just highlight where all the ones are. We can see we don't have a whole lot of them, so we don't have a lot of hope for any uh, hidden singles from these ones. But yeah, so I'm not really seeing anything there, so let's just move on to twos. And we only have two twos placed, so definitely not going to find any hidden singles from these twos yet, especially with the way that they're presented. We said threes were done already, so let's look at fours. So I'm just going to highlight these fours. And again, we only have two fours, so when we're scanning this puzzle in the future, until we have more twos and fours placed, we might want to just kind of ignore those a little bit for now. How about fives? So we have two fives here. That's already interesting, because th these are two fives in, in again, a shared, in a, in a box row, right? So within boxes seven, eight, and nine, I already have two of my fives. So that means the five has to be in this row. One of them's filled, and we actually can look up and see this five here is looking down here. So we actually do have a hidden single five in this box. And just by looking at each number one at a time, we, we found that. So now we've immediately placed this five, and we can say, okay, well, what does this five see? Well, to the left and the right, that's not gonna be useful because we already have these boxes done. But what if we look up? Well, now these can't be five, and we have this five here that prevents this from being five. Um, but we already have a five in the box. So again, that's something to be careful about. <laughs> So let's highlight our fives again and see what we're actually missing. Um, okay, so I have enough fives that I have a suspicion that we're going to find another hidden single. And in fact, if we look, there is one here. So these fives can't, these can't be five because we have this here. We're just going to double check so we don't make that same mistake that there's, a, there's not already a five in this box, and there isn't. And then this, this five here is seeing up here. So there's only one cell left to be five. 
So it seems like at this point we probably can finish the five. So let's just take a look. So we have these, these two fives that look into here. We have this five that looks here. So this is a five. And I'm going to immediately look left now. And we can see these two fives here look up. So this is a five. And I believe that finishes the five. So we have these three, we have these six, and we have these nine fives. So fives are done. We don't have to look at them anymore. And now we can move on to six. And sometimes once you've placed some numbers, it can also be helpful just to restart um, because you might have filled somewhere that could have been that number, but now it can't. But I'm just going to keep moving forward. It really doesn't matter. You know, Whatever is fun for you. So I'm going to highlight what can be six. And I'm actually seeing now in this box that this six looks here and this six here. So this is the only place for a six. And so now I'm immediately looking up to see if sixes do anything here. I'm looking down. We already have a six. I'm looking left. We already have those sixes. Okay, so that didn't do anything else for me. But I'm, I'm seeing two things. One is we have two cells left in this box and two cells left in this row where we place this six. So let's look at the box first. What's left in the box? Well, we need one and we need nine. So I'm immediately looking and I'm seeing, oh, I have a one looking in. So, uh, so this cell can't be a one. So this has to be the one. And then the remaining nine is filled here. How about this? How about this column? So I need a columns are a little bit harder to scan. Um, and I have this full screen. So that, that, that's handicapping myself a bit, but even I can see that we need a one and then we need a three, uh, we have a three, we need a two. So we need a one and a two. And I already hear the word one and two and I'll go, oh, I already looked and those don't have a lot placed, but I can, I can at least look to see if in the box or in the rows, if we have a one or a two, this row doesn't have one, this row doesn't have one. So we still have just one or two left in here and we, we can't place those yet as hidden singles or naked singles. So we'll just look elsewhere. Um, sometimes it's nice to revisit places we've seen before just to see if maybe we've placed something that we need. Again, this needs to have a one and a six. I'm still not seeing a one or a six looking in, so there's not much we can do about that. What about this one? Do we have anything in this row that's not already in the box? So in this row, we're looking for a number that's not already in this box. And I'm immediately caught catching this seven here because seven is in this row and it's not in the box. So these can't be seven. So we can immediately place a seven here. And when I do that, I'm looking left. There's already a seven in this box. I'm looking right. There's already a seven. I'm looking up. And we can see that that eliminates these from being seven. And then this seven eliminates these. So we actually have this as a hidden, oops, I typed one instead of seven, a hidden single seven. And we placed this one. I'm looking left. I'm looking right. I'm looking up. I'm looking down. It has no effect on its rows or columns. Um, I'm looking here. And so we know that the seven's gonna be somewhere here, but we don't know where yet because we don't have any sevens placed in, in this top three rows at all. But we did, we did limit this box now. This has three left. So what are the three? It's two, it's four, and it's eight. Well, I'm seeing this eight look in. So we know the eight's gonna be up here somewhere. Um, we said two and four, and we, I, those are triggering me because I already know that the two and the four, we don't have a lot of those placed, so I'm probably not going to find a hidden single. What about this column? What's left in this column? Well, again, we've got, we need a two. I'm not seeing anywhere for a two. We have three. We need a four as well. So again, two and four, probably not super, super helpful right now. And again, I'm not seeing that. So we're going to look elsewhere. Um, Where else can we look? What about if we revisit this box? Do we place anything interesting here? Well, we need a two, a four, that those sound familiar, and we need a nine. Well, nine, maybe. Well, we've got this nine and this nine looking here. This nine looks up, but unfortunately, these two can still be nine, so we no, no dice there. Um, okay, so what about this column? There's three left in this column. So we need a one, a two, and a five. So, oh no, we have a five. Uh, it's a four, right? A one, two, and four, that's unsurprising. But look, we have two ones looking here. So neither of these can be a one. And we need a one in the column, so this is a hidden single one right here. And immediately when I place that one, I'm looking. I'm looking right, um, well, let's look at this box. We have two places, oh, and, and this one looks in, so that places a one there. 
I'm looking down, nothing good down. Um, we already have a one in this box. We already knew one had to be in one of these two. All right, well, we placed this one as well. So I'm looking left, I'm looking down. And when we look down, we see we have this one and this one. They, they eliminate those two and we can place this one. And now there's only one left in this column, which is a two. And that two might be really powerful because we don't have a lot of twos placed yet. So let's keep that in mind. So the rest of this box can't have a two in it. And oop, here's what I'm seeing. We have this column and we have three cells left. We need a two in the column and this two in the box prevents either of these from being two. So now we have this as a two and now we can finish this box. We need a uh, four. So we're starting to place twos and fours. And that's, that's really nice because we really needed those twos and fours. We can finish this row now and that'll also finish this box. So we need um, a six in this row. And if you remember, the box needed a one, so we can place a one there. There's three left in this row. So what are they? A two, a four, and a six. So do we have twos, fours, and sixes looking in? And um, unfortunately, I see this six here, but I'm not seeing anything else. So we're gonna have to fill that later. So what about this row? What do we need? We, have a, we need a two, a four, um, sounding like a broken record with these, a two, four, and nine. So we know this can't be a nine. I'm not seeing how nine's eliminated here. How about twos and fours? Uh, and, uh, we have the four and the two looking up here, but these two can be two and these two can be four. So no hidden singles in that row. We haven't given up yet though. We are gonna solve this with just hidden singles. What about this uh, column? And I am revisiting these. So we're gonna keep that in mind when we move on to our next strategy, but this needs a two and a five, and this five looks into here. So this, oh, sorry, we don't need a five. So I almost made a mistake there. Um, so we need a two and we need a, we have a three, we need a four, two and four, that's unsurprising. So we don't have any twos or fours looking in there yet. Um, what about this column? So in this column, we have we need a two, we need a four, again, unsurprising. And what is the third one we need? We need a um, six. So I'm seeing this six look here. Sorry, the six is in the box as well. So we have, we have a six, we, six can't go here. So six would have to go here or here, but I'm not seeing anything eliminate those. So we're gonna keep looking. How about nines in this box? So a nine can't be here and a nine can't be here. So nine is limited to these two, um, but unfortunately we can't place a nine yet. What about this column? So this column has three left in it. So we need a six, an eight, and a nine. And we see that eights, these two eights look into here. So the only place in this column for an eight is here. That's a hidden single, we can place that. And again, this is not how I would normally solve this. What I'm trying to prove is that we don't have to fill candidates at all, and we can still solve this puzzle. So uh, bear with me here while I, while I finish this up. So um, we need a six and we need a nine, and this nine is looking here. So this is gonna be the six and this is gonna be the nine. This was a hidden single nine and that allowed us to place this six. And we can immediately look at these values that we placed. We placed a nine and a six. So these nines look into here and this line looks up. So we can finally place this nine. And now this nine looks down into here and this nine still looks up here. So we finally get to place our nine in this box. And we can see if that had any in interesting effect on the rest of the box. So we need a two and a four. And the two is looking into here. So this is the only place for a two. And this now is the four. So we're getting pretty close to finishing. The two sees these two, so we can place this two. It is also the last one for the, for the row. Um, what about these two? So we need a four and we need a seven. So I'm not seeing anything see those. Um, I believe this was a two four left for our column. I'm remembering that. And this two is seen here. So this is gonna be the four and this is gonna be the two. And then we have two left for this column. So we need a, uh, we have a two, we need a four. So is four looking into any of these? Uh, unfortunately not. What else do we need? Uh, looks like a six. 
Is a six looking into any of these? Um, still no. Okay. Oh, well, this box is done. So what's the remaining one for this box? It's a eight. So I immediately place that eight. I'm looking to see it, it, every all the other eights are placed. So that was our last eight. Um, again, I can look at this one, three, five, eight, nine, one, three, five, eight, nine. So unfortunately, we don't we can't fill that as a hidden single in that way for the box. Um, we have one, three, five, eight, nine in this row, so that's also unhelpful. Um, oh, here, this column just has one left in it. So this can be, this has to be a four. So now four is looking into here. Um, so four is going to be up here somewhere. But four is also looking into here, forcing a four here. So now that we place this four, we can finish the box by placing a seven. And we are very close to done now. So um, fours looking into here. This is a hidden single four. And then that four looks down to here. We still need a four in the box, so the four goes here. That was this four here looking down. And so now the last one for this box is a six. So now sixes look up into here. We still need a six in the box, so the six goes here. There's one left for this row. That's going to be a two. Single one remaining for this box, so that's going to be um, a seven. For this row, we need a, a six. And then we just have these two columns left, which are done. Um, so for the box, this is a nice, uh, sometimes it's quicker to scan a box than, a, than columns. So I'm saying for the box, we need a two. There's a two here, so this is the two. And then the remaining one for the box we need is a seven, so we can place that. And we are done. That is the unique solution to this puzzle. And I didn't have to fill a single candidate. Now, of course, it probably took me a long time, but that's because I was being silly, right? And I'm just going to take a quick glass of water before we continue. All right, so now I'm going to do a second puzzle. And when I do it, this, this second puzzle, which I'll bring up right now, is a similar concept where we can, all, we can use just hidden singles in this puzzle to solve it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you a sane way of filling candidates. It's obviously it was a bit insane for me to, to just try to do all of that based off what I see in the current state. We had noticed quite a few things that I then forgot and had to recheck. So the question is, what is a reasonable way to fill candidates and what's an unreasonable way to fill candidates? So we were already talking about how it would be really silly for me to go through one cell at a time before I even start the puzzle and just fill every single candidate possibility. And obviously there is software out there that'll do that for you, but I feel like that takes the fun. It takes the heart out of solving Sudokus. The whole point is, is to have fun, to simulate what you'd be able to do with pencil and paper. The software just helps you keep that clean. Um, obviously the computer can do everything for you. The computer can tell you step by step what to do, but at some point you're just cheating yourself out of the fun. Uh, and you're just not gonna wanna do that many Sudokus because it's just staring at candidates with overload of information and then not sure what to do about that. So let's, let's consider a sane way to do candidates. And this is what I'm going to do. And I'll do it as, as we look. So for example, I see that there's, um, well, okay, well, let's just get started. When, when the candidates become relevant, um, I'll, I'll bring that up. So I'm seeing two twos looking into this box here. So this is a hidden single two in this box. And again, I'm just going to mention what my eyes see. Okay, so this nine here is looking into this box, and it's eliminating two of these candidates. So this is a perfect opportunity to introduce um, the corner notation. So if you look at the software that we're using, there is an option to do corner notation. And I'm going to type 9 in corner notation, and that puts a 9 in these corners. And what this means is that within this box, a 9 can only go here or here. And actually, if you have a keen eye, you'll see that there's a 9 here already. But I'm going to finish explaining this, and then we'll, we'll clean that up. So with a 9 only going here and here, this isn't saying that Let's see. So this isn't saying that 9 is the only candidate possible in this cell. What it's saying is that within this box, only these two can be a 9. And so that tells us, immediately tells us a few things. But most importantly, what it tells us is if we ever find a 9, for example, this 9 here, that eliminates one of these, so I can just remove that, 
Now there's only one place in the box for a 9, and that's immediately telling us about this hidden single. So that's a hidden single 9 in the box. And we could see that with these 9s looking in here like that, leaving, if I remove this here, right? These 9s look into here like that, leaving only this cell for a 9. But if we had previously seen that there were two places for a 9, or even sometimes three, although I recommend sticking with two, um, then we don't have to recheck that every time. We just, when we place a 9, we can go back and look at that box and go, oh, okay, that eliminates one of these 9s, so now I know I have a hidden single, and it saves us some time. So that's a pretty sane thing to, to mark. Let, let's continue with this puzzle now. So I'm seeing in this row that there's only two possible values, and we can think that those are 3 and 6. And I'm seeing the 3s looking down here. So this is the 6, and this is the 3. So 7 is eliminating these, and this 7 looks down here, so this is a 7. Oops, but we already had a 7 in the box, so I'm being silly. Um, so this 7 here looks down here, and this 7 looks here. So this is another really good opportunity where we've eliminated all but two cells from being 7. So I'm going to corner mark those as 7. And in the future, one, one of two things can happen. Either we'll place a 7 somewhere up here, which will eliminate one of these 7s, and that'll let us place the other one as a 7, or we'll fill something other than 7 into one of these two, in which case the other one has to be 7. So that's the real big advantage of the corner mark notations. And because it's so easy to look for hidden singles in a box, that's obviously the easiest one to do, um, because you just look at what's looking into the box, and you can just sort of do these highlights even uh, if it helps you. Um, you'll often just go, well, it's not a hidden single, but it's down to two. In this case, four is down to three candidates. I'm not going to mark that because I don't like marking three candidates. In some situations, it can be helpful, but not in this situation. Um, well, how about this column? This column has two left, so we need, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five. We need six and nine. So I'm seeing this nine here, so we can immediately fix six and nine. And what about this column? We have two left, so we need we have one, two, three, four, we need five, and we need seven. So this one can't be a seven, so we're going to fill a seven here and a five here. This box now has only one left, so we can fill a five. Okay, and so now as soon as I've, I fill these, I like to look at what else has been limited by this. So for example, this seven, I can look left, see this box doesn't have a seven yet, immediately fill this as a hidden single 7. Now this row has only one left in it. So, and I'm trying to kind of keep track in my head of what I've placed, and I might unwind and look at 7s again later, for example. Now there's only one left in this box, so that's going to be an 8 here. And so now I see in both this row and box, there's only two candidates left, or two cells left that can be filled. So those are a 5 or a 6. And we see that the 6 looks here, and also the 5 looks here. So both of those say that this is a 6 and this is a 5. So um, what else can we look at? Um, OK, well, this box has 3 left in it. So the 3 left are 1, 2, and 7. So I'm seeing that those aren't eliminated yet. So this is a good place to use center notation. So we have 1, 2, and 7 remaining. And we can see this 7 looks in, so this one can't be 7. And what center notation means is this cell must be one of these values. So it's not saying anything about the box or its column or its row. All it's saying is for this particular cell, those are the only values it can be. And so if I ever place, say, uh, a 1 or a 2 in, in this row, then that'll eliminate the 1 or 2 possibility here, and I'll be able to place it. And so that's, that's actually going to find us naked singles. And when you're down to two or three candidates in a cell that you can't quite figure out, it's not a bad idea to just fill the candidates in the center. And in that way, you don't have to keep re-remembering and re-scanning what those are supposed to be. So basically, the paper or the software is, is remembering for us. And so in this box, we also have two left. So mentally, I'm going to look first and see that it's 6 and 8. And I'm going to see that there's an 8 looking here. So I don't have to use any notation. I just fill 6 and 8 like that. 
And it's good that these didn't match any of these 1, 2s, or 7s, because otherwise we, we would have a mistake. We'd have a problem, because we wouldn't be able to have unique 1 through 9 in this box anymore, or this column. So we're going to keep looking. And again, I'm looking at weak spots, and I'm looking at stuff like this. So 2, 5, 3, 8. So 2, 3, 5, 8 in order. I've got 5, 3, 8, but I've also got a 9 here. So 9 looks into here, and I'm looking, scanning up now, and I'm seeing this 9 here looks here. So this is the only place for a 9. And I'm immediately checking to see if this 9 has any other interesting effect. It does not, though, because we actually had four 9s already looking into the box. We just hadn't noticed that. So, um, okay, well, how about this row? Since we just placed this 9, we have three values left for this row. So it's going to be a 1, and I'm immediately looking at 1s and seeing, okay, well, 1 can be here or here. Um, we need a 3. So in this box, we have a 3 already. So the 3 is going to be in one of these two. And so that's actually something that we can mark. We can say, okay, 3 has to be in one of these two. And we can also see that here, that this 3 prevents these from being 3. And that wouldn't have to be the case. Um, but in this case, 3 is here or here. Um, and I'm not marking the 1 here or here, because we don't have a good way to mark that. Um, Corner is for the box, and then center notation is if you're going to fill all the candidates, which we might. We'll see. Um, and then what's left? Uh, four. We also need a four. So I'm looking to see if there's any fours in, the bo in these boxes, if there's any fours looking down here. So this four looks down here. So it could be worth just filling one, three, four in this row, and then saying, okay, this can't be three, and this one can't be four, and this one can't be one. So now we just have these candidates, and they're all down to, to two candidates each. So as soon as anything else gets placed um, that's one of these candidates, we can then say, oh, we, have, we found a naked single, and we can fill it. So um, let's see what else we're looking at here. Uh, this column has only two left, so it needs a one and a two. And I'm not seeing in the rows or the boxes any ones or two, so I'm just going to mark one or two in the center. So that way I don't forget that there's supposed to be one or two. Um, okay, well, this column here has three remaining, and I'm especially interested in seven, just because I'm seeing this center, seven center marked, but um, I'm seeing this can also be seven, so that was just something I looked at real quick. And we can probably, there's a, there's a nice sort of shortcut where I'm seeing a one and a four here pencil marked, and a seven pencil marked here, and as long as I've been keeping up with my pencil marks, these are probably one, four, or seven for the rest of the column. And if you look, that is true. So one, four, or seven. And I'm going to look left and in the boxes to see if there's anything eliminated there. So this can be one, four, or seven, and so can this. So, But the pencil marks is helping us remember something that was interesting that we found. So it's not necessarily bad that we filled it. All right, so I'm looking at eights in this box. I see this eight come down here. And what made me think about eights was we needed an eight in this box, and I already had these candidates filled without an eight. So I, I know that there's eights looking in already. So this eight looks in here, this eight looks here, so this is the only place for an eight. And if we're looking at this row, we see we have the one, two placed already, and I quickly scanned to make sure one, two was still correct. And because there's only one um, other cell in this row, we know this is also has to be a one or a two. And if we were to look at the candidates for the, for the row, we would see that that was true. So, but we're not, uh, none of the one or two is eliminated in this case, so we're not going to be able to do anything with that. Here I'm going to quickly look. We have three, eight, nine, and six. Um, so I'm seeing a four is looking down here like this. And so four is limited to here or here. So I can mark those in the corner. And in this column, we actually only have two left. So uh, we need a, we have a one, two, three, we need a four, which makes sense. And we need a six. So the six is already looking into here. So this actually has to be the four. And this is a six. And since we've placed this four, it's really important to, now that we're doing center marks, we need to clean them up. So when I place this four, I'm looking at its row, I'm looking at its column, I'm looking at its box, and I'm seeing if I have any pencil marks that need to be cleaned up. So same with this six. I'm looking to see if there's a six anywhere. There was not. So that is fine. 
And we should be finishing this puzzle pretty soon. We have a lot of stuff filled in already, so we just need to look to see what, what we're missing here. So I'm seeing a three here is looking and eliminating these two, and I was already looking here and seeing that this was a one or a two, and that's because of this three here. So this sort of, <coughs> excuse me, helps me shortcut that this is a hidden single three. And now that I've placed this three, we do two things, right? One, <coughs> one is we see that this three, four, and we could clean up the three and the three, but also we could just say, well, this was a three, four. It's seeing a three now. So we're just going to place that four, and it'll, it'll overwrite all the pencil marks that we had. But also, we had a three corner mark in this cell, and we filled it with not a three, which means the other place in this box that had the three corner mark, we can immediately go, that has to be three. And that's a hidden single three. And if we look, if I just erase this cell, of these cells, what can be three? Well, this three sees these two. So yes, this is a hidden single three. So our, our corner mark didn't lie to us. We placed this three and this four, so we'd better scan. This four looks all the way right, and that means that this has to be a one now. This placed one means this is seven. We have the one and seven placed here, which means this is four. That took the seven corner mark, that's a seven. And you can see how this can be much faster now that we've pre-added some, some markings. Here, one and two is left in the box. I can just immediately know that because I have this one, two placed. And I quickly scan to make sure there wasn't a one or two. And we have a two in this column already. So this is the one, this is the two. This two sees up here, making this a one. We can eliminate one, and we forgot to eliminate the seven here. So now this is a two, one, seven. Um, these two columns are done. Uh, we need a two, which goes here. And we need a eight. So that's the eight. This row is now done. Uh, we need a one. That makes this a two. And for the rest of the box, we need a five. And so now we're done. And you could see that this puzzle went a lot faster. Now, they weren't necessarily equivalent puzzles, because again, even though they're both could be solved with hidden singles, that doesn't necessarily mean that to a human, it's immediately obvious where all those hidden singles are. Um, so this puzzle may have been a bit easier, but also, you could probably tell that the fact that we were placing those pencil marks in a smart way as sort of a, a memory of what we've already discovered, that ended up being a lot more useful than just blindly filling all the candidates first before we even do any logic. So <laughs> you could probably uh, imagine that if I wasn't sitting here explaining everything that I was doing, this puzzle probably could have been solved in, I don't know, four minutes, five minutes. So. That's pretty good. So that is what I wanted to go over today for the lesson um, in terms of naked singles and hidden singles and appropriate use of pencil marks. And if you check in the description below, you'll be able to try these puzzles yourself. I'll, I'll specially call those out in case you want to try them yourself. Um, but also, I, will, I have provided 18 more. So there's a total of 20 puzzles that are just like these two where you can use this software to, to solve them, the, the F-Puzzle software. Um, and thank you to Eric Fox for being very kind in, in um, allowing me to use this software uh, for the puzzles. Um, he's, the, he's the creator of the software. And it is going to be 20 puzzles, the first two being the one I already solved, which all can be solved with just hidden singles. So if you want to practice without any pencil marks at all, feel free to practice without any pencil marks. If you want to practice smart pencil marks, go ahead and practice that as well. And see if you can solve. I mean, you obviously don't have to do all 18. I provided 18 because that seemed like a number, well, 20 in total. That seemed like a number of someone who really wanted to practice. That's about how many that they start going insane doing. And hopefully that'll tide you over until my next lesson, where I will be introducing more advanced but still fundamental strategies for Sudoku. And if in the meantime, also, you wanted to watch any of my other videos, um, I don't just do the this uh, Learn to Love Sudoku series. I also have uh, live solves where I solve a puzzle for with me seeing it for the first time. And I also have puzzle showcases where there's a puzzle that I really enjoyed solving in the past and really wanted to call out and say, this was an amazing puzzle. You should try it yourself. And also here's how to solve it in case you get stuck. And also, I create my own puzzles, 
and I will also create videos on how to solve those, uh, just in case someone gets stuck or wants to see what the, the intended path was for those. Um, so feel free to check out those videos as well, and most of them are also introducing certain kinds of variants to Sudoku. So if you're interested in what a Sudoku variant might look at look like, feel free to check out those videos as well. So I'm going to reserve um, the ending of these um, videos for links to the previous and next one. So uh, just go ahead and, and go to my channel and check out uh, my other videos if you want. And other than that, um, I hope you enjoy solving uh, Sudokus, maybe for the first time in your life, and if so, that's awesome. Please let me know in the comments how you did, if you enjoyed this series. I hope it wasn't too slow for you. Um, don't worry, things will get much more advanced very quickly, which is why I'm providing a lot of puzzles with the, uh, the simple stuff, the singles. So, again, enjoy yourself, and until next time, thanks for watching.